Hello, in this short video we're going to solve equations like cosine theta equals minus a half using the method of general solutions, that is trying to get a formula for all of the infinite number of answers to this equation. So let's first find one answer which is I'm going to call the principal value, just one answer for theta and we're going to do that by taking the cosine inverse of both sides, so cosine inverse of minus a half if you use your calculator it's 2 pi over 3 or you can think about it on the uh, uh, using special triangles and which quadrant you're in, etc. Let's just remind ourselves about cos inverse, that function. So to make it a function, we had to restrict, remember, the cosine curve. Here's the full cosine curve, one period of it, from 0 to 2 pi. And you can see at the moment that does not have an inverse function. It doesn't have an inverse function because it's a cosine is a many to one function. So if we did the inverse it would be uh, one to many and it would fail the vertical line test and not be a function. So what we have to do is make cosine, restrict the domain to make it one to one and of course we restrict it from zero to pi. So we're only looking at the part from zero to pi there um, when we do cos inverse. So strictly speaking we always know when we do cosine inverse that we will get an answer back that's between 0 and pi. So it's no surprise when we did cos inverse of minus a half, we got an answer between pi over 2 and pi over 3. Because here's minus a half, and clearly that's giving me the answer there, 2 pi over 3. Now we've got one answer, we can find the secondary value. OK, let's have a look at the full cosine curve. So I've drawn a, a few periods there of the cosine curve, and we're interested where it's equal to minus a half. So we can see that's our principal value there of 2 pi over 3. And we can take that principal value, and we can generate this answer here, because it's 2 pi further along. We can generate this answer here, because it's 2 pi further along. So we know a formula already using our principal value, 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n where n is a counting integer, so it can be 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, etc. But unfortunately, we're missing lots of numbers. We're missing the one going up the roller coaster, aren't we? We've got all the ones going down the roller coaster, but we, we haven't got them going up the roller coaster. So we need to get at that one. Now, the secondary value for cosine, the easiest way to get it is actually realize it's symmetrical in the y-axis, and the one going up the roller coaster is always the negative of the principal value. So this only works for cosine. So for cosine, the secondary value is always the negative of the principal value. So in this instance, it's minus 2 pi over 3. So we can generate our second answer, which is minus 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And an easier way to write that is actually combine the two together. So my full general solution is uh, x equals plus or minus 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And when, then you can put various values in. If you put n equals 0 in, we get the value 2 pi over 3, minus 2 pi over 3, put n equals 1 in, we'll get all the other answers, etc. So thank you very much for watching. I think I may, yes I did, I apologise for notation there. I started with theta and changed to x, so I'll just quickly correct that as I've changed to x. Um, thank you for watching. If you like this video, maybe you could check out my general solution videos on sine and tangent as well.